Okay, um, in this particular video, we are going to build a base classifier using the knowledge uh, we, we just gained so far from the probability models. Um, so, so basically, we will be working on real data, IRIS data, uh, the classification data. Uh, let me show you the data once again. Let's say IRIS is uh, seaborn SNS dot load so this SNS is just um, import uh, seaborn as SNS. So I already have imported that. So that's why I'm not um, importing that for that again. So SNS dot um, iris is SNS dot load data set um, iris. And if you see this iris dot head, let's say uh, we have four random variables or four attributes sepal length sepal width petal length petal width and these are the classes um, the species are the classes for these data set so basically if we just uh, if i just write iris dot species dot unique um, so i will get these classes yeah so these are the classes so um yeah, so uh, further uh, we can have, uh, for example, um, we can have, um, um, we, uh, we, we are not going to use all the four random variables uh, because so far uh, we are not planning to use the joint distributions of different random variables. Uh, we'll be using just one, one of these random variables. Let's say that's a restriction that use either sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width, either one of those to predict the species. Um, the, the one reason for that is uh, right now we, we just know how to work with a single variable, single random variable. Later on we will see how to extend our knowledge to joint distributions with multiple random variables. But let's see, uh, we use one of these. So let's select one of these random variables uh, to describe the species uh, through visualization. So let's see for example SNS dot pair plot pair plot um, iris uh, and the class or the category is species so this pair plot will help us maybe visually uh, maybe visually we will be able to identify uh, which um, attribute may be more uh, maybe more uh, um, maybe more helpful in so for example if you see uh, the attribute sepal length, uh, the distribution of different sepal lengths, although they all look like much like Gaussian distributions, but they have a huge overlap. So we may not just use sepal length alone. Uh, maybe we maybe we go to sepal width, but as you can see, the sepal width, the different distributions of different classes. So distribution of setosa, for example looks like uh, looks like uh, looks like gaussian but uh, it overlaps with other distributions as well so this feature sepal width is not very discriminative if used alone however if you if you if you look into petal length or petal width individually uh, the distribution of setosa for example um, is is very discriminative than the other two distributions and the other two distributions they have very small overlap so maybe we maybe we attempt to use petal length or petal width but if i see petal width uh, the distribution of setosa is not as great a gaussian as in case of petal length so i might be tempted by seeing this plot i might be tempted to model the distribution of setosa um, using petal the, the distribution of petal length um, of category setosa, maybe I model that as Gaussian by estimating some of the parameters. Maybe I model the um, versicular as Gaussian. Maybe I model the uh, Virginica as Gaussian in the different Gaussians, and maybe then I move on. Uh, however, uh, if I use petal width, uh, the distribution by shape uh, they they do not look uh, as nicely uh, as Gaussians as in petal length. So let me select the petal length as the random variable of interest. 
and build my classifier based on that. So let me build some data. So X is basically um, iris dot petal length. So that's my data. So if you see X dot shape, it is basically um, it is basically 150. So because there are total 150 data samples in there. Further, the target labels. Let me compute the target labels as well. Uh, the target labels are, uh, if you see, let me let me write the target labels as iris dot species. So these are the target labels. If you see the target labels dot, um, so y dot unique, for example, if you see the target labels, you have these uh, setosa, versicular, and virginica. Uh, let me let me just uh, let me just code uh, these. Uh, uh, wherever we have this uh, so for example let's let's have another uh, array and let's code these uh, setosa with zero and versicular with one and virginica with uh, with for example two that's one way of numerical coding these or we can just work with strings if you like so let's have uh, y2 or y wherever y is equal to, um, uh, let's say, setosa. Replace that value with uh, a zero, maybe. Right now, I'm using that as a zero string. Later on, we will convert that to integer if you really like. Um, so that, or we can just have, for example, um, wherever this is um, versi color just replace that as one um, and wherever this is um, virginica for example virginica replace that with 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 two string two yeah so okay so now if you see the um, y values now if you see the y values there oh virginica is not replaced why not? Uh, what's the problem here? Virginica. V E R G I N I C A. That should be replaced by two. Why it is not being replaced? Um, it has. So if we see, for example, unique values in unique values in Y now, they are zero, one, and Virginica is not replaced. Why not? So let me have, let's say this as a list or L, uh, let's say that. And let's see what is L minus one, that is this. So what we do is Y where Y is uh, L minus one, just replace a two there. It should get replaced. Uh, C user, a value is trying to be set on a copy of a slice, that's okay. Um, so y dot unique now u n i q u e unique and no, yeah it is set now so y is um, uh, zero one and two these are basically the um, yeah so these are these are the uh, these are the these are the values in y. So y is zero, y is one, y is two in string form. So now if you see x, um, that these are the values of x, different values of x. If you see y, these are the different values of, different values of y. Oh, sorry, I should have small y. So different values of y are zero, one, two, and all that stuff, okay? So um, now we have x and y available. x is the our random variable. Uh, or, or a feature based on which we really want to predict uh, y. And y has three values, y0, 1, 2, which are the class categories. Uh, now let's build the theoretical building blocks, how we are going to pursue this. Um, our goal is to predict y, our goal is to predict y given x. So we really want to build, so let me write that as capital X just to uh, just to stay consistent with Python. So we really want to build this uh, probability model. Uh, 
So we want to build a probability model to predict y um, given x. So when x is given, what is the probability of y? Obviously, if, if I can have this function, by the way, this will be a probability mass function because this y is a discrete random variable. Although, it, um, although the given random variable x is continuous, but uh, the probability model we are building is for y and y is discrete. So whatever that probability model will be, that will be a discrete model. So using this base formula, this probability of y given x will be um, density of x given y. Why this is density? Because x is a continuous random variable. Uh, and when we talk about continuous random variables, we talk about densities uh, into uh, probability um, of y divided by um, density of x. So that's the base formula. And here we are using mixed random variables, one random variable that we are depending upon or the given information that is continuous and the random variable that we are going to predict is discrete. And this is how the base rule that is for mixed random variable. The, the rule here is wherever you have alone, wherever you have probability for discrete, that is a PMF. Whenever you have probability for continuous, that's a density function. And you can mix them up, mix them up no problem. Uh, and that's a valid probability law. Now, um, that's what we are interested in. And uh, to build a base classifier, for example, we do not need this factor um, because all we need is to just uh, compute probability of, uh, let's say, y equals to zero, given x is equal to something, some, some value, let's say uh, 1.9, and that will be equal to, let's say the value of x given to us is 1.9. We want to check whether this goes to class zero, class one, or class two. And that will be um, density of x, um, density of x where uh, x is equal to 1.9, um, given y, uh, x is equal to 1.9 given y equals to zero into probability that y indeed is zero uh, divided by probability that, um, or density that x uh, actually is 1.9, so this. So this is for zero. And um, similarly, if we compute the same probability for one uh, given x is equal to 1.9, uh, everything will stay as it is, but these y values will change. Um, and if we compute probability that y is equal to 2, given the same value x, 1.9, uh, the formula will stay the change, but the y value will change. But in all these three formulae, you can see that the denominator, it stays the same. And because we are just interested in whether y is equal to zero is more likely, y equals to one is more likely, y equals to two is more likely. All we need is the comparisons in B, these three. Which one, if, if the probability that y is equal to zero, if that is the highest, um, that we are, then, we will, then we will say that this basically belongs to uh, class zero. Uh, if probability that y is equal to one is highest, then we will say, okay, it belongs to class one, otherwise it, just go, it goes to class two. So we are not interested in computing the exact probabilities here. All we are going to compute is the comparisons of these two, these three. And comparison will stay the same even if we do not include this uh, denominator factor. So we can just safely remove the denominator factor. Um, by removing the denominator factor, the result will no longer be a probability value, uh, but the comparison will stay the same. The, with, with this denominator value, whatever the comparison is, without the denominator value, the comparison will stay the same. So, so what we are interested in, in these two factors, um, probability that, uh, pro so, so we are interested in computing these probability of x given y, that's one component, then we want to compute, which is called class conditional density. Another uh, probability model that we want to compute is the, this value, which is called the prior distribution. Um, yeah, so this prior distribution might be very easy to compute. Um, because uh, this is just wh what is what is the probability that the next um, value that you're going to looking for belongs to class one, it belongs to class two, it belongs to class zero. Well, that can be modeled maybe by seeing the frequencies uh, on the given data. 
in, in the given data, what fraction belongs to class one? What fraction of data belongs to class one? What fraction of data belongs to class zero? What fraction of data belongs to class two? And this might be fairly modeled using frequencies. Um, that might be one way. So that's prior. In this particular case, we will see the frequencies of different uh, classes in the data and we may model that. Modeling this one might be much more tricky. Um, and here we are going to see how can we model these. If you go back to uh, Python, for example, um, and see this uh, and see this uh, plots, we are moving towards uh, we, we we are going to use petal length here. You can see that um, uh, in in given given y is equal to zero, which means it is setosa, the petal length is distributed much like a Gaussian. Uh, we do not know what is the parameters of the Gaussian, what is the mu value for this Gaussian, and what is the sigma value for this Gaussian. Uh, that needs to be computed. But the first to see in that, what is the probability class? Um, that, uh, by visualization, might be uh, very well settled that it, it is Gaussian, uh, or, or can be modeled very well using a Gaussian. Similarly, if you see versicular, so given that uh, the class is versicular, the petal length is again distributed like uh, much like a Gaussian. So this is also a Gaussian. Uh, we do not know the, the parameters of this Gaussian, which is mu and sigma, uh, which we'll be computing, which we'll be trying to compute, but um, at least we settle that uh, the distribution model is Gaussian or normal, similarly for, for these. So if we, if, we just, if we just focus here, um, in, in this particular case, we can, we, can, we can, by just analysis, visual analysis of the data, we can safely assume that fx x given y equals to zero is normal with some mu uh, one and sigma one, which we do not know. Similarly, uh, f x x given y equals to one is also normal with some mu two and sigma two, which we do not know. And uh, similarly, um, f, x, x, y, two is also normal. At least we assume that with some mu three and sigma three that we do not know. If we, if, we can, if we can estimate this mu1 and sigma1, this mu2 and sigma2, this mu3 and sigma3, then we can estimate all these probabilities. And you can see, uh, you can see in this particular formula, ignoring the denominator, which is just the normalization factor and does not change the comparisons, um, uh, we can, we, if, if, we, if we really want to model this, uh, and we have settled the the model class that it is normal for every um, for every given y, then then the only hard part that is remaining is to estimate the parameters of those normal distributions because once the parameters are there, we have this formula available, and then second we will concern about computing the prior distributions. So that's the goal. We need to find out the parameters of this distribution to to actually build the whole classifier with us. So let's go to um, Python and actually proceed um, proceed in estimating these parameters, um, estimating these parameters um, uh, using certain techniques that we know. Um, and, and obviously we will be using one technique that we do not know, which is called maximum likelihood estimate. I'll be just giving you, uh, I will just giving you a name of that, which will be coming in uh, subsequent sections of the course, uh, but, um, but there are ways to there are ways to estimate the parameters, and now you might be now you might be feeling how the parameter estimation is important. Uh, without the as, without estimating the parameters, um, you cannot proceed towards classification or, or any probability modeling. So because that's the data that is given to you here in front of you, there is a data. Um, you see, uh, that's the data in front of you, a lot of data. So this x is available, y is available. Now go and find out the parameters of the distributions. Find out the distributions, that's it. Um, well, the plot helps you um, when there is only one variable, 
uh, or just two or three variables, the plot or the visualizations can help you in settling the settling the model of the model distribution model, whether it is normal, whether it is exponential or what kind of. But even if you have settled down the model, what are the parameters? Because by changing mu and sigma, you can have a lot of different normal distributions. Which normal distributions you're talking about? We need to find out the parameters of the normal distribution. If we have settled it as normal, that's another decision. How we have settled it as a normal distribution? That's another question. But assume that, let's say, we have settled that it's a normal distribution. It's a normal distribution. This one is normal distribution. Okay, then what are the parameters of this normal? What are the parameters of this normal? What are the parameters of this normal? Until we find the parameters, we can use the formula. We can we cannot use the anything out of it. So yeah, so we'll proceed uh, uh, from here on uh, in Python uh, by first computing the uh, prior distribution, the probability model for y, and then we'll be focusing on on uh, this uh, mu and sigma one. So let's go to Python. First of all, um, first of all, uh, let's generate, uh, let's, let's split the data. Let's split the data um, into some data that will be available for us for modeling. And we will, we will assume the rest, we will, uh, we will keep some of the data that will be not used to uh, build the probability models and we'll assume that data to be unseen sometimes called the test data or validation data and we will test our classification scheme on that data so let's build some of the some of the some of the splits of the data uh, which is valid in machine learning we uh, if we use all the data available in modeling then uh, what is the data on which we are going to check the performance uh, the data that is used in modeling will perform better because it, it actually guides the modeling. But we have to keep some of the data that is not involved in the modeling process. In machine learning, that is called a training process. Uh, we have to keep that data separate so that to, um, to evaluate the performance of our model uh, in, in really unbiased way. So let's split the data. Let's keep some, let's keep, let's say 10% uh, of the data out out of these and, uh, uh, and and later on we will test uh, the performance on that. So let's generate for example index IDX uh, training index. Let's 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 permute the index uh, np dot random dot permutation. Uh, let's permute that uh, indices np dot arrange np dot range y dot size uh, let's say these are the indices let's have some uh, random permutations of those uh, let's say we have uh, set the training size let's say n uh, n train training size let's say the training size is let's say 120 out of the total or maybe we can set the percentages and let's say the test size is uh, and test is let's say um, idx dot size minus n train whatever that is or you can set the percentages uh, I'm just using the simple notation there are 150 samples I'm using 120 to uh, for for modeling and I will be keeping 30 samples uh, randomly selected where I will test the performance of my model so that is uh, n test uh, what we what we really do is x train let's say is uh, simply x um, and I pick the idx um, starting from zero to n train um, so that's the training model similarly y train is uh, y idx Again, the same n train number of train, so that's the y train and x test that will keep uh, away uh, out of all this process is x um, idx starting from uh, n train till end. So, and y test the corresponding labels um, is y. And we will be doing IDX 
and train onwards. So after doing this, we'll be having uh, y train dot size that is 120 and y test dot size that is uh, 30 and uh, the training data and the, um, the test data that is randomly split. Now we will forget about this test data. We will forget about the actual class labels and we'll forget about the, the data and we will be using just the data, um, training data for modeling, um, for modeling all the distributions and uh, then we will check the performance of the classifier on, uh, on the test data. So let's build first of all, use the training data. Let's build the, what is the fraction? So what's the fraction? So what's the probability of y is equal to one? So p y, so probability of y, let's say p y, let's say probability of y, let's say that's np dot um, array, np dot zeros with just size three, uh, because we have just three classes. Here in this particular data, we have three classes. We can write here general variables as well, but I'm using uh, just a number three. I know the three classes are there. So py equals three, py probability of y at class zero is basically um, y equal equals to uh, zero. So y equal equals to zero dot sum divided by, um, so this is basically y train. Now we are working with y train divided by size of y train, y train dot size. So if you see now, py zero, that is basically 0.31. That's the probability py that we are computing here. And we are computing the probabilities just based on the relative, just based on the frequencies of occurrence in the data. Similarly, we can compute the probabilities for uh, probabilities for others, um, other classes, class one and class two here. So that is class one, we write a one there. That is class two, we write a two there. And these are the prior distributions. We just computed those. And here we can just print uh, py. Uh, and these are the distributions because uh, these uh, uh, with these fractions, these uh, um, these classes, they appear in the data. So that py will act as a prior distribution. Next, we need to compute uh, fx given y. So now, uh, fx given y, um, so for example, we need to compute this uh, fx. So let me write the capital uh, or fx given y fx given y. So, or, or I can just write the underscores to make it more readable, fx given y, fx given y. Uh, now, for each y, we need to have our fx. So, for example, um, that is again uh, uh, np dot zeros for now, np dot zeros, uh, and it, it has a particular formula, I mean, um, we, we, we can set up this with zeros or we can just compute the, uh, or we can just have a list of, uh, uh, list of, for example, this might be a list of tuples where the first value is the mu, the second value is sigma, which is right now this. The, uh, the first value here again is, uh, is mu and sigma for the second class and for the third class, we may have zero and zero. Uh, because we know that the, the model for each is normal, all we are interested in just to find out the mu's and sigmas. So let's, uh, let's initialize that with that. Now the goal is to find out the mu's and sigmas for each of those. Law of large number says us that uh, the mu is simply uh, equal to, with mu, which is the expected value of uh, the random variable x 
it is simply the sam sample mean. If we just compute the sample mean, we are very much okay uh, computing uh, computing the mu. Uh, sigma, however, is 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 something is something tricky to deal with. But let's compute the mu's at least. So first of all, let's find out the data. Let's find out the samples. Uh, so x zero is basically all the samples where y equals zero. So basically, I need to compute x strain, uh, x strain from x strain. I want to find out uh, where the y is zero. Y train is zero. Sorry, y train is zero. So that's all the data uh, that belongs to class zero. Uh, similarly, we should compute all the data that belongs to class. Um, zero class two and one as well so here we have one here we have two so that is the data let's say one and here we have two yeah so the data is available now uh, mu which is uh, uh, mu which is uh, we really want to compute mu's here for this data mu for this data mu for this data that might be very simple um, actually, actually, we can compute mu uh, straightforward from here uh, without saving that he to here. But, um, but let me compute these. So mu one, mu, let's say, let me call it mu zero. That is x zero mean simply due to law of large numbers. Mu one, that is x one mean. No problem. Mu two, that is x two mean. No problem. That's straightforward. Yeah. Now the now the question is about uh, about the standard about the about the value of the sigma sigma one sigma two sigma three. So here I am um, using uh, using something uh, without proof that uh, the the one way to estimate these sigmas uh, is to uh, is to just compute the standard deviation or the square root of the variance of the data so this mu the expected value of this mu as as i discussed earlier here um, in 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 the case of normal random variables in the case of normal random variables the basically uh, the expected value of uh, uh, of the of uh, basically this is the this is the variance the variance uh, the variance turns out to be sigma square so yeah and and there are ways to compute that so if you by the way um, by the way I'm, I'm not saying that uh, I can compute this variance from from the sample and that may be the variance of the uh, original distribution I'm not saying that but in case of normal random variable it turns out that the maximum likelihood estimate, um, we will discuss the maximum likelihood estimate in the subsequent sections of the course, but it turns out the maximum likelihood estimate of this uh, um, sigma is simply the sample variance or the square root of the sample variance, which is sample standard deviation. Uh, this is not a direct result, this is not an easy result at all, but that's a result that we will prove uh, in the next section as well. Right now I'm just using that that if you compute the standard deviation of your sample data, the sample standard deviation, that corresponds to the sigma value. But this is true just in case of normal distribution. Uh, in other distributions, you have to take care of it and you need not to extend, you should not extend this result to all the distributions. Uh, although the result about um, the expected value uh, of sample and the expected value of the population due to large numbers, law of large numbers, that holds for all distributions. This result that the sample standard deviation actually is the parameter sigma in the normal distribution. This holds, this does not hold in all distributions. Uh, but luckily it holds in normal distribution, which we're just going without proof with. So let's compute now. Uh, sigma zero, which is just x zero STD, standard deviation, positive standard deviation. Similarly, we can compute others as well. Um, one, that, 
and two with so here we have one here we have two yeah so now we have each and everything and we can now specify the full uh, distribution the the class conditional distribution using these terms if we really want to so let's let's write for example um, f x given y um, fx given y where the distribution is zero it's um, the distribution is zero it's mu is uh, mu zero and Uh, the distribution is zero and its uh, sigma is uh, sigma zero yeah so oh there's an error there's an error uh, tuple object does not support item assignment um, oh oh my god you can now you cannot you can not, the, the the tuple is uh, yeah it's immutable you cannot change it so let me not use these tuples let me use the lists uh, lists inside the lists yeah let me not use the tuples the tuple is immutable i just forgot it you cannot change it once once set you cannot change the values let's use the list instead um, or maybe an umpire array if you want uh, so that and that works out no problem okay now um we we move same for the other values I'm writing the code in a in a very laborious way just to just to get you a very good look and feel of what is happening so this is mu one and this is uh, sigma one here we have one uh, here we have two and this is mu two here we have um, uh, two and here we have sigma yeah, that's it. So now we have distributions. Let's see the distribution for Setosa that we that we came up with. What's the distribution of Setosa? Let's, uh, if you remember somewhere earlier, we have generated these distribution plots for uh, yeah. So that's the that's the formula for Gaussian random variable. Uh, let's copy that and paste there. Just to actually let's let's copy the whole code. Um, let's generate some x and yeah, just to just to give you the distributions that we just came up with what they look and feel so so we uh, for for i in range let's say 3 from 0 1 and 2 mu's and sigmas they are available already we we'll use those ones um, let's say that's our let's just see what it, how it looks like how our estimated um, how our, our estimated distributions they look like so for example mu here is uh, mu here is uh, f x given given y and mu is simply um, i and zero that's mu and sigma is uh, the same thing with with a one out there yeah if there is no so that's mu that's sigma and we have different distributions so here we have for example string of class from class zero class one and class two so let's see from the data uh, what distributions we came up with. Let's see. Oh, range three, we have missed something. Um, here we have, yeah. So let's see if there's no error. Yeah, so these are the distributions we came up with. Let's reduce the, uh, let's reduce the range of the sample we are generating. Let's go from, let's say, minus five to five just to see it in a more wide way yeah or maybe from 
maybe from minus 2 to maybe 10, just to see it. Yeah, so these are, that's the distribution for each. So this is Setosa, that is the second class, that is the, that's the distribution that we model from the data. And now let me show you the distribution, the actual distribution that was there in the data. That's the actual distribution. You see that? Uh, that's the actual distribution. And that's the distribution we came up with from the data. Yeah, that's the distribution we came up from the data. And we also have, now we have our prior distribution that is available. Now we have our uh, class conditional density that is available. So we now have the two components that are available with us. For example, this component, we have estimated this from data. We have this component, we have estimated this from data. Now we will walk through over test data and we will try to predict different values. So for example, we will pick an X value from the test data that is unseen right now, and we will try to predict its class label. Where the true class label is also known, we will do that for just for evaluation, how our classifier is performing. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's go to. Let's go back to our um, Jupyter code, and uh, let's see our test data. Let's say X test is X test. Uh, let's pick one of those. And let's print that value, what that value is, xt. That value, oh, oh I have some problem here. Uh, x test is not defined, what? what's the problem? Zero, what is that? Pandas libs hash zero is not available, why not? X test is there or not? Have we generated this x test or, or not? Let's see, um, a lot of errors, x test. Oh, that's available. So what's the problem? Oh, this is Panda's object, I guess. Um, it is still Panda's object. It is no longer an umpire array. So let me check the type of it. Yeah, it's Panda's. Let's convert that to an umpire array. So x test uh, is np dot as array um, x test, I guess, and that will work out. No x test. Let me check the type of it. Type. So the type is really this. Wow. And now let's pick uh, xt as x uh, test zero and just print that value xt and that value is three point seven. Now given three point seven, given three point seven. Now x is three point seven here predict its class, that's our goal. And we will predict its class using uh, these formula. So let's predict the class. So let's see, uh, fasten your seat belts. Um, okay, let's predict the class. Um, so uh, probability of, probability of y, probability of y given x is is what probability of y given x uh, probability of y equals to zero given x so the probability that y is equal to zero given x um, that is what uh, so that is basically uh, the prob that is basically the 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 density that given the y is equal to zero the density of x into the probability that y is equal to zero. So these are the two things. So first of all, we write py zero multiplied by something that we really want to know. And that something is basically can be computed through this formula. Yeah, this formula is the formula of Gaussian. So let me just, let me just pick that here, control C. Let me just paste that here. Um, control V. Uh, so multiply with that's the and here x is our x t. Um, we x is our x t. We have to compute the mu and sigma as well. Mu is uh, um, let me copy the mu from the above code. 
the code is getting this video is getting lengthier and lengthier but I really want to I really want to show you what actually happens in classification in in these probability models how we really model these things uh, so when when i equals to zero i equals to zero we model probability of zero given x uh, using that that's mu that's sigma and xt is there yeah so that's the probability of a probability of y uh, equal to zero given x uh, let's see if it works yeah so next we compute um, let's see what is probability of y by the way this is not exact probability value because uh, the exact probability value required the denominator factor as well uh, so we are not uh, writing these so this value may be may not be in the range 0 and 1 uh, maybe it is but it is no longer a probability value so see that um, this value is very close to 0 so yeah so which which is saying that it may not be it may not belong to 0 but let's see let's do for the rest of the classes as well so let's compute the probability of y equals 1 let's compute the probability for y equals 1 and also compute the probability for y equals 2 so yeah so now we take y equals 1 here we have y equal, y equals 2 and that's 2 so yeah now we have three probabilities uh, let's compare the three probabilities just compare them visually let's see uh, just print them p y zero and that p p y one and that and p y um, two and that and here the result is uh, uh, the maximum value here we found is for as you can see this is very close to zero focus on this e raised to the power of minus 39 that's very close to zero so this is 0 0.08 and this is 0, 0 something which means um, it looks like that, that that the class of this x is one because this is the winner um, so our classifier says based on the maximum value our classifier says that the class winner is one. Uh, let's see the true value here. What, what's the true value of y? Remember which one we picked? We picked the first one. So the true value is y test. Um, let me check the type of it. If it is pandas, uh, then we have, yeah, it's pandas. We have to first convert it to numpy array. y test or we can index through pandas as well but it is convenient for me at least to work with numpy arrays np dot s array y test so now what's the true label what's the true label let's see oh the true label is one and we classified that as one so our classifier at least for this particular example is working very very well um, yeah um, and, and by the way, this is the this is the data point that was not involved in the modeling process or the training process. Yeah. So finally, uh, let's check. We, we can check that for another, uh, for example, value. Maybe maybe let's say um, x test at let's say ten. Um, that is this, uh, and then we have computed a lot of things, and with that the winner looks like uh, again as class one uh, let's see uh, this we have already converted into that and here we have what 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 was the index here 10 maybe 10 yeah so what's the true label we predicted it as we predicted it as uh, one because this is the winner uh, what's the true label let's see the true label is two here we have made a mistake uh, the true label is two and our classifier says it's a one yeah I mean yeah uh, we have done a mistake 
let's uh, test uh, our classifier is not working well on this particular data point uh, let's check it for example on a different data point let's say 20. Um, so here our classifier basically is saying our classifier is saying that it should belong to class zero because this is the maximum out of all uh, let's check um, what is the true label oh the true label is zero it again performs very well so yeah i mean you can check the performance of your classifier on test data which is not involved in the training process and here is um, somewhat uh, complete uh, implementation of the base classifier um, using simply using just one uh, random variable given ran using just one attribute other than the class attribute um, but uh, but focus um, focus on the focus on the data uh, iris dot head focus on the data we have a lot of attributes why we are throwing the rest of the attributes why we are not using the multiple random variable at once so for example do not consider the species right now let's say that's a class label that's a different random variable but see the rest of the random variables upon which the class label depends there are so many why we are just using petal length maybe using the other random variables along with petal length uh, may improve the classifier accuracy uh, why we are throwing a lot of information that is available so that's topic of our ne next module where we will be seeing multiple random variables and the probability distributions over multiple random variable joint distributions but the underlying theory will work or stay the same so here you have seen the base classifier implementation um, uh, and, and a clip complete walkthrough of how even the even how even the uh, complicated kind of classifiers they extends uh, extends from just probability theory and here we have just used uh, all the theory that we know so far um, other than just one thing which is the maximum likelihood estimate um, which which brings us the estimate of this parameter yeah that we will see in the next section as well so yeah great hope to see you next time <laughs>